Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Check out this newly released inverter from Sweet Power. This is their Smart Edition upgraded display, remote switch, Bluetooth, all kinds of cool features. I'm gonna cover all the features and benefits of this inverter today. If you're looking for a full review on this inverter, you found the right video. Let's get right into it. So this is Sweet Power's newest inverter with Bluetooth. This is an upgraded display, all kinds of features. If you haven't heard of Sweet Power, they are a large manufacturer of quality inverters. Majority of people that have a Sweet Power inverter like them and they're pretty hard to kill. You see the external construction of this inverter is solid aluminum, no plastic on this one. That's all aluminum with fins to help remove some more heat. We have two large cooling fans in the back. There's our positive and our negative terminals right there. And you can see the frame of it right here. The back cover and front cover are steel and we have mounting points right here in the back. We have mounting points right here in the front. We have our switch up front, the remote. We have some indicators two plugs plus a hard wire option. So we have our neutral and our line and a ground terminal up front if you want to use it for a hardwired application. And Sweet Power also offers various different sizes. This is one of their smaller offerings. They have 3,000 watt inverters, 3,200s, 4,000s, 5,000s, 6,000s, all kinds of inverters to match most of your power needs. And along with the inverter, if you were to purchase this inverter, you get a remote switch and a 20 foot com cable you plug it into the back of the little remote switch right here we also have bluetooth and we also get a user manual uh download the app to use on your bluetooth apple device i'll show you that in a minute we got two power cords i've already modified these power cords for today's test this came with ring terminals i put some other terminals on there we got some spare parts right here we got some ring terminals right here for if you're doing your hardwire ac output spare fuses all kinds of different things and here's the Bluetooth app QR code. So here's your Android based one and the iOS based one. I'm using iOS today. And the manual for this inverter is a little on the basic side. And it's not, not great, but it's, you know, it gives you everything you need to know and shows you all kinds of, you know, your recovery voltage set points and all kinds of things. It shows all our output specifications. You can see there's some of the offerings from Sweet Power all the way up to 6,000 watts with a 12,000 watt surge. So they'd make some monsters. Uh, greater than 90% efficiency on these inverters. And this inverter is North American spec, so it's 120 volt output, 60 hertz. And you can get this inverter readily available in 12, 24, 36, or 48 volts for the North American standard. If you need a different voltage, just reach out to Sweet Power and they have all kinds of different products that they can make for you. And if you're in a different country, just check your local vendor that has Sweet Power products and see what offerings they have for your country specification. So for this model, I chose a little bit different voltage. So right here, I got a 36 volt version. It's gonna be used in an upcoming project. It's gonna be used a lot, but the build quality is the same regardless of the voltage. The only difference is the configuration for your DC input voltage, all the AC output boards and all the filtering capacitors and all that is exactly the same. They just modify it for whatever your DC input voltage is. Now these are the included power cords with the 1500 watt soy power. These are 10 gauge, 200 degree jacketed wires. You can't really see it on camera, the, the spec on it right there, but it is there. And they are 10 gauge, but they came with ring terminals on both ends. Like I said, I cut, cut the ring terminals off to modify for my battery pack I'm gonna be using for today's video. So I've got the Sweet Power Inverter hooked up to a test set of batteries right here, and that's a series set of 12.8 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries to give us our nominal 36, or actually 38.4 nominal. And to turn on the inverter, you come over to the switch right here, just flip it to the on position, it's a momentary switch, it drops back into the down position, gives you a blue indicator light right there on the power LED, and then we come right here to the display, and it shows us what we have right there. So we have 39.6 volts input, and our output is 60 hertz, 122 volts with zero watts coming out of it. And if you're wanting to power this inverter off, you come over here to the power switch, hold it right there till you get two beeps, and then it shuts down. Now I'm gonna hook up the remote switch. So you put your comm cable into that port right there. So I'm gonna plug my comm cable in there. Then I'll plug the other side of the comm cable into the back of the remote switch. So when you plug in the comm cable in the back of the remote switch, you get the indicator light right here that mimics right there. And then same thing, turn it off, turn it on, pretty straightforward. 
Now let's check out the app for the Sweep Power Inverter. You can see that I preloaded the CN Sweep Power app on my iPad right there. So then you just, you know, just like any other app, you push the app, select the device, and then you'll have it. I dimmed the lights for you so you can see the display right here and right here. You can see what this is showing. That's showing pretty close. Just a small, minuscule, momentary delay between the readings here on the actual display and the Bluetooth app right there. So it shows you, you know, everything that you're seeing right here, but from your device. And let's see if we can turn it off from the Bluetooth app. Yes, we can. That is pretty cool right there. And so I can turn it back on. Yes, I can turn it back on from the Bluetooth app. That is nice. I like that. So I'm checking to see if these readings right here are accurate compared to a standalone meter. I'll start on the battery side or the DC side. We're showing 39.5 volts there, 39.5 volts there. So I will check it with a standalone meter right here and see what we got. 39.87 according to the meter. All right, now I'll check the AC output voltage. Showing 119, 122. It's bounced around a little bit because it's not loaded or anything. So push it, push the probes into the plugs right here and we'll see what we got. All right, 122.6, 124 right there. It's showing pretty stable right here, just bouncing around a little bit on the display. So we're stable here, but moving around a little bit here. So that just might be the COM board that's monitoring these voltages. But you see right there, the actual output is staying very stable. Then just a quick view of the sine wave unloaded that's coming out of this inverter. And that's pretty clean. So we'll see what it does when I put a load to it. So I put a DC clamp meter over here to check our idle consumption on this inverter. So it looks like we're around 0 0.13, 0 0.14 of an amp idle consumption. The BMSs will hold 30 amps for a few minutes because they are thermal based. So I'm going to put in the load roughly about 650 watts. So that should keep us from popping anything. All right, so the power cord is coming over here to a 12 volt charger. So I'm going to turn the charger on now. Give it a second. Try to watch our current climb right here on the DC side and right here. We're at three amps over here. Right, the charger is initiating. So pulling the load on the inverter now. So you can see our power draw right here off the AC side, 624 to 634 watts. That's about what the little 12 volt charger pulls that I'm using. You see the battery voltage is at 36 volts and we are pulling 18 amps out of these batteries and they got a 20 amp BMS in them. Remember they're thermal based. You see our sine wave right here on the output of the sweep power. Yeah, a little bit of noise in there from the power factor on the charger right there. Not bad. And then here's the Bluetooth data right here. So it shows our output current, which is the AC side. That's five amps uh, load rate, uh, roughly 40% loaded. So that's pretty cool to see that on the Bluetooth app. All right, so I'm gonna stop the charger that I'm pulling the load off of the Sway Power with. So there we go, our load and everything should drop back down. So I'll show you that over there, right there, just standby current that that charger is pulling for its circuitry so right there the battery's recovering back up and you can see right there back to our idle draw of around 0.12 of an amp so pretty close to where it started from all right so it wouldn't be a video unless we max this inverter out or attempted to remember i'm short on power on the dc side today i'm going to see basically this will be a test of what these batteries and these small wires can deliver before something trips. I don't know if we'll go on a low DC fault here first or trip the AC side first, but uh, eh, let it eat. All right, the cooling fans were on. That's enough, I don't wanna overheat the BMSs here, overheat these wires. That was close, but not quite enough. 
All right, let's try that again. I've got a splitter on here now. I've got the uh, hair dryer right there that was around 1300 and I've got my world famous battery clean device aka destroyer of Opie's power stations. So let's see if I can pop this off. Hopefully that's proof of concept for you. It staggers the voltage down to keep from overloading. So it's got built-in overload protection. So you exceed that 1500, it starts bringing the output voltage down to keep you from exceeding that. And the surge worked because about that many pops with the vacuum cleaner on that power station, it blew the power station up. This inverter handled that. Even being under batteried on the DC side with tiny little wires, it took it like a champ. No alarms, no faults, anything like that. Didn't even really make the internal temperature come up on it or anything. So, yeah, the sweep power is pretty tough. And that's why I stopped the test. I didn't want to you know, hurt those little batteries right there because they only got a 20 amp BMS. But they're thermal based, so that's why you could get that bigger hit out of them for a moment. You know, once they heat soak, the BMS thermal switch would open and they would drop out. So I stopped, you know, to keep from doing that because I don't want to kill the power on the inverter just yet. All right, so, you know, voltage are covered back off the batteries and everything like that. So there's your, you know, your Bluetooth. Pretty basic, but it works, you know, not bad at all. So now I'll open up the cover on the sweep power, and we'll take a quick look at the build quality and how this unit's made. It's a clamshell design, so just remove four screws, and the cover will pop right off. Here's the back side of the display on the front cover right there. You can see Zija sweep power. All right, starting over here on our starting over here on our battery terminals, our input terminals, we have a solid brass connector. I scratched that with the razor knife a second ago, right there. That is brass. Got a ring terminal with a hydraulic crimp for the power leads, and those look to be number eights, dual number eights. There's no coating on the jacket. They're a little larger than a ten, so probably a metric equivalent of a number eight, but they're they're definitely larger than number ten. We got. Two on the negative, two on the positive right there. And each positive lead has 30 amp fuses and the fuses are actually removable, serviceable. So if you ever pop these fuses from an overload condition or something like that, uh, they're actually changeable. And that's you know good that they include them uh, with your packet right here. Uh, many of them on other inverters, you have to actually unsolder you know, the fuse itself, but this is nice. I like seeing that. And our dual fans on this inverter line up perfectly with the heat sinks on the board on the FET bridges right there. So no nice airflow coming across through here. Shouldn't have any problems keeping it cool. And they were thermally and load based fans. So you can see our thermal switch right here to activate the fan. And then around a thousand watts the fans would come on during that test a few moments ago. And you can see where this thermally based control comes down here to the fan logic portion of the board right here. And those are the fan leads coming off right there. We have another temperature sensor right here for our overload on the control circuitry. So if the heat sinks get too hot, there's our actual sensor through the control circuitry to kill the inverter for an overheat condition. And another thing I like seeing on this inverter too, the actual heat sinks are anchored into the board. They're not just sitting on the FET bridge and they actually are anchored into the side of the case right there. So very rigid. There's nothing going to vibrate loose or come loose in this inverter and we have all kinds of adhesives and things to keep stuff from rattling or coming loose so this should be a pretty tough inverter long term and looking at our ac side wiring from the hardwire port and the receptacles right here the receptacles each have 16 gauge wires going down to a solder connection on the board these aren't daisy chain together they actually take the leads and go to their own solder joint right down in there that's very hard to see and then our 
hardwired side, it actually has two 14 gauge wires. So if you wanted full load capability, the hardwired option would be your best if you weren't using the plugs, if you're actually wiring into something. And then the ground on these receptacles right here, they loop, loop around, you can see right there, it ties in there to the ground, loops around to the back side of this ground screw. It's not connected to anything else on the boards. Over here on the control circuitry, there's not any trim potentiometer or anything on this unit right here. There are some dip switches right here and it appears that dip switch number three is on and the others are off. So I do not know if that's for the address for the Bluetooth or if this actually changes some functions you know, with the actual operation of the inverter. I can't find any literature on that. So just letting you know everything I'm seeing. So I'll share my final thoughts on the little CN Sweep Power 1500 watt 36 volt inverter. Uh, worked pretty good, handled the vacuum cleaner and hair dryer test, which has killed some other things. It took that no problem. You know, it does the soft start voltage drop to keep from tripping. Uh, you know, that could be an issue if you have compressors, refrigeration things, and you have a big load. You're running a smaller inverter like this, you get that little voltage drop. That might not be the best thing for compressors and things, but most other appliances or how you'll be using this little small 1500 watt inverter shouldn't be an issue for you i do like the remote switch the 20 foot lead i like the bluetooth love being able to turn it on and off with your tablet or your phone that's pretty cool replaceable fuses so if you ever pop it uh, you know you can open the cover up change your fuses a little bit of field serviceability that is nice to see as well decent board quality decent construction you know pretty pretty robust build on this little cheap inverter and these are low priced i'll have a link in the video description by the way so you can check this out and get current pricing uh, if I had a you know little gripe of mine right here would be we don't have covers. There were no covers included on for the DC side right here. So our battery cables are exposed, which they're on opposite sides. So it'd be hard to short out unless you put a wire on there. But just keep that in mind. There are no covers. You may need to fabricate a cover or put some heat shrink on there or something to protect these covers. I like to keep everything you know covered up best I can. And then the small voltage discrepancy between what the meters were showing and what the display is showing. Not that big of a deal. That's more probably with the communication protocol on the control circuit to the display. More than it is the actual output. You can see the output on the board was solidly consistent with the meter on it. So just, you know, let you know everything. I do like the hardwired option on this 1500 watt model. You know, that's always nice to have right there. So you have more options than just using regular you know, plug-in accessories. So look for this sweet power inverter again in some upcoming videos. I'm going to install this in a less than ideal location. This is going to be really abused where I'm going to install it at. So let me know your thoughts on the little sweet power high frequency inverter. Do you have any sweet power products? Do you have any feedback or thoughts on sweet power? Any questions about this inverter, please put it in the comment section. I will answer your questions the best of my ability. Hope you enjoyed today. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you on the next one. And special thanks to CN Sweet Power for providing an inverter for today's video so I could demonstrate your inverter's functionality and build quality. Thank you.